Salute omnes, welcome to this um, video lesson on Apollo and Daphne. Here we have a picture of Apollo looking kind of anachronistic here, not so much like a Greek god, pursuing Daphne, um, who, as we can see, is sprouting some branches and leaves. Apollo persequitur Daphne. Apollo pursues Daphne. Notice Daphne ends with an N, the letter N. It's kind of like the letter M in Latin in that it uh, will make an accusative singular form here. Um, quae a pineo patre in laurum mutator, who is changed, mutator, by her father Pineus into a laurel. Now, laurus is laurel in Latin, and Daphne means a laurel tree um, in Greek. Uh, it's also known as a bay tree. If you've ever seen bay leaves in a spice uh, jar, they come from a bay laurel or laurel tree. So we call her Daphne in English, and her name is Daphne in Greek. Daphne, filia Penei, Daphne, daughter of Peneus, qui Deus cuius dam fluminis erat, who was the god of a certain river, primus amor fuit Apollinus, was the first love of Apollo. Qui tamen etiam si puellae cupiditate fere consumebatur, who nevertheless, qui tamen, even if he was nearly consumed, fere consumebatur, by love, or not to love, but desire for the girl, cupiditate puellae. Puellae is literally a genitive, so desire of the girl, literally. Ab ea ut amaretur efficere non poterat. He was not able, non poterat, to effect, to achieve efficere, that he be loved by her. Um, if you have a verb of making or effecting, bringing about that something happen, then you're going to have an ut clause, uh, which is called a noun clause of result. And that's what ut amaretur is. They notice we'll have a subjunctive verb, amaretur, imperfect subjunctive here. So that he be loved, ut amorator, by her, Abea. Namque puella eum oderat, for the girl hated him, atque fugiebat, and ran away from him. Quomodo id akiderit, how it happened, nobis narat, ovidius poeta. The poet Ovid tells us. Okiderit is a perfect subjunctive. Notice the eri in the indirect question here, quomodo id akiderit. Postquam Apollo, after Apollo, qui Deus arcu validissimus est, who is the strongest or most capable god with a bow, pitonim anguim ingentem et tam terribilem, ut etiam dii eum meturent, mille sagitis eus corporis percutiens de wicit. So de wicit, um, after he conquered or defeated the Pytho, Anguim and Gantum et Tom Terribilum, a snake huge and so terrible, ut etiam dii, that even the gods, eum meturent, dreaded him, percutiens eus corpus, striking his body, mille sagitis, with a thousand arrows. Ob magnam victoriam, on account of his great victory, Walde Galdebat, he, meaning Apollo, was very happy. Atque gloriosus per vias ibat, and he was going through the streets glorious. Now, we might say gloriously or boastfully, braggingly. Um, glory or gloriari is a deponent verb in Latin that means to boast or brag. So, um, boastful is a good way to translate gloriosus. Dum vero sic superbe segeret, but while he was carrying himself so haughtily, seek superbe. Cupidinem parvulum deum arcum amoris flectentem conspexit. He caught sight of, conspects it, Cupid, a itty bitty god, parvulum deum, arcum amoris flectentem, bending his bow of love. So um, Cupid is depicted as a young man or a boy in Latin and Greek. Um, texts and in the Roman and Greek art, um, not as a baby like we see little cupids today, but Cupido, the Latin name, or Eros, the Greek name for this god, is again a young man or a boy. 
Clamavit igitur, he therefore shouted, this is Apollo, ad eum ridens, to him laughing, non tibi parve puer fortia arma conveniunt, brave or strong arms, weapons, do not fit you, are not fitting for you, small boy. Umros meos ista decent, those things of yours ista, befit my shoulders decent umros meos. I who, qui, nu perime solus pitonem serpentem interfeci, who most recently, nu perime, alone by myself, solus, pitonem serpentem interfeci, killed the serpent pytho. Pytho, notice, is going to be a capital P. Python comes from this in English, um, but it's a particular, it's a proper noun for this particular big snake in Greek mythology. Quid opus est tibi arcu? What is the need for you of a bow? Apud matrim maneas. You should stay with your mother. Now maneas with the E-A-S Notice that's a present subjunctive. Let's beat a giant friar. Okay, so the E-A vowel change there. So this is a suggestion. Um, he's giving him advice. You should stay with your mother. And of course he's being kind of snotty too. Ne laudes meas cupiores. Now cupiores with the E-R-I note is a perfect subjunctive again, like we had in akiteret. And if you get ne with a perfect subjunctive, it makes a negative command form. Don't you want my praises? Don't you desire my praises? Newe post hoc, nor after this. Talibus armis ususi. Do you um, use such arms, such weapons? So basically saying, don't seek after my praises, my honors. Don't use such weapons as this hereafter. He doesn't want him to use the bow and arrow, right? He's like, that's just for me. I'm Apollo. I'm the god of archery. Tunc cupido, then cupid, fronte contracta, with his forehead contracted. He's getting serious here, furrowing his brow, getting angry, maybe. Non impune inquit, hoc mihi dicis. You do not say this to me, hoc mihi, uh, um, without penalty. So impune, that's where we get impunity from. Impunity is a um, state of being free from punishment. So sine poina is the meaning here in Latin, without punishment. So basically, Cupid's saying, you're going to regret that. Eke, look, krabo utskias, I will take care of that you know. The utskias here is another noun clause of result, like the one we had with efficere up above. I will take care that you know, utskias. Quam fortis sit meus arcus, how strong my bow is. The sit here is subjunctive because we're in an indirect question. Axtatim, sagitam akutam, e faretra capit. And immediately he took a sharp arrow, sagitam akutam, from his quiver, e faretra, qua superbum apollonis pectus transfixit, with which, qua, he pierced the haughty chest, superbum pectus, of Apollo. Neque cupidinus sagita e similis iis, nor is Cupid's arrow similar to those. Quibus homines mortales utuntur, which uh, mortal humans use. Notice quibus is ablative um, because utor, this deponent verb that means to use, takes the ablative case for its object. We had that up above as well where it said talibus armis usus cis. Said wim habit mirabilum, but it, meaning the arrow, has a miraculous or wonderful strength, power, force, something like that. Nam tanta est ilius sagitai vis, for so great is the power, vis, of that arrow, ilius sagitai, ut si quis ea vulneratus sit continuo saevo amore, saevo amore afficiatur. Um, that if anyone should be wounded or has been wounded by it, meaning the arrow, notice ea is feminine, just like sagita, straight away, immediately, continuo, so it's a synonym for statem, he is affected or afflicted, afficiator, with savage love. Eke vero, but look, Daphne prima Apollin, apollini, Amore flagranti accurit. Daphne first meets Apollo, accurit Apollini. Accuro takes the dative of the person you meet. 
Amore flagranti, burning with love. That describes Apollo, of course. Notice flagranti agrees in dative case with Apollini. Pulcheria my nympha, the most beautiful nymph. That, of course, refers to Daphne. Notice it's also nominative like she is. Quae cum feras in silvis persequindo et occidendo atque libera per campos correndo gauderet, um, who, since she rejoiced, gauderet, in pursuing and killing wild animals in the forests and in running free through the fields, dominamque dianam verginim haberet, and she had uh, the maiden Diana, this is uh, her Roman name, her Greek name is Artemis, as her mistress, that is, um, this nymph uh, looked to Diana or Artemis as sort of her um, chief goddess. The nymphs often would run with one of the more powerful goddesses, and so this says she's part of the crowd of the nymphs of Diana or Artemis. Numquam virum ulum cognorat, neque amaurat. Never had she known nor loved any man. So, because Diana or Artemis is a goddess of uh, the moon, hunting, archery, and also she's associated with virginity, uh, with young women, um, then it makes sense that her nymphs also don't associate with men. We did nymphom etiam cupido. Cupid also saw the nymph. Qui quoniam Apollinim ob eius superbiam severissime punire consturat, who since he had decided to punish Apollo on account of his haughtiness, ob eius superbiam, most severely severissime, alteram sagitam, cuius vis non excitat, imo amorem pellet, E ferretra eductam in puellam yecit. Um, he shot another arrow whose force does not excite, but rather drives off love, pulled out of his quiver at the girl. So the pulled out of his quiver, eductum e ferretra. Notice eductum agrees with sagitam, so it describes the arrow, of course. Itaque, and so, percuso corde utriusque, with each heart, each person's heart stricken, that is Apollo's and Daphne's. Nympha odio affecta fugiebat. The nymph uh, afflicted with hatred ran away. Apollo vero eam amore excitatus persequebatur. But Apollo um, pursued her excited by love. All right, so there we are at 34. We'll continue this in a bit.